Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm all about doing. Welcome to the part two on making a React crazy cool timer using React, of course. So where we have stopped the, the last time is only gone through and we've, we've set up the start timer, the stop timer, and we've talked about how stage works, the setting the state, updating and all of that, and behind the scenes. And you, you pretty much just can see we start the timer, it works, we can stop it at, at a specified time and stuff. But for now, what we need is to use the capture time. So whenever we click that, we get some kind of a list displays up in, in, I don't know, some kind of a left side or something that shows the time that we have captured without this time stop so of course and also we need to make the reset button work so whenever we click that everything goes from here to zero and we clear the timer interval and stuff like this so let's just dive right into this because this video tour is gonna be very very simple and very very easy for you to understand since you we have gone through the basics things uh, you know the last video tutorial and everything have been set up correctly so now we're just gonna complete things and make the full timer thing so here we need now to, to do the reset button since it's very simple so let's just go ahead back into our code and um, into the render into the render method as you can see we have the reset so let me just add the on click events in here so on click and we can use this we're gonna call it I don't know handle handle um, timer reset so reset and we're gonna bind obviously make sure to always bind this context into the specified um, handler you're gonna pass in you know, to any events um, callback or handler so yeah to any event listener actually so make sure to do that and here let's try to add the handle time reset we're doing it and obviously I don't know um, something okay let's just take that a bit by the tab and here the handle time reset what we need is to take everything into zero so here for example let, let's start the timer again and as, as you can see it's counting up so here let's say I don't know we start it as like 007 when we click the reset what we want is to every single like the seconds go to zero minutes go to zero if there are any and hours of course go to zero so this is what we mean by a reset we set everything to zero so we can start looping back or start the timer again over and over again so just start from scratch and like reset everything back to default so to default state so what we can do is very basic so all we do is just go ahead and use the set state and here the set state we're gonna call um, seconds so seconds are gonna be like zero um, minutes gonna be zero and hours are going to also be zero and obviously make sure to do a timer uh, started so timer started goes to false and timer stopped uh, goes to true so you know like we resetting means we have stopped the timer so the timer started goes to false and timer stopped goes to true we're stopping the timer and seconds minutes and obviously hours gonna go to zero and set the state correctly right now also the other thing we need is to clear the interval so here if you can remember that we have cleared the interval with handle time timer stop so now we can do the same thing for this particular one clear interval in here obviously you're gonna take the interval and remember that we have start the interval in the this dot timer so if you can clearly remember that we have stored it under here and yeah we everything now is good to go Be sure that yeah we've set up the correct thing and we are pretty much good to go now control s uh probably need to save and refresh everything now let's try to start the timer and let's just let it now it started as you can see and try to click reset and boom Awesome, everything is working right now. So everything gets reset to zero and the timer stops immediately. So so like we're not getting when we set it's not going to automatically start counting up again. So we're just gonna immediately stop after clicking the reset button. Like we have clicked the stop timer, then click the reset timer button. But this is gonna do or the reset button gonna do that actually for us automatically with no problem. So as you can see, stop the timer, stop it with no problem, and reset it into back like to the the base state or the default state now we yeah, have the recess very basic now let's go ahead and implement actually the capture time what we want is whenever like we let's say the timer is i don't know something oh oh two like zero zero hours zero minutes and four seconds or six seconds we click the capture time and here we get a list 
like displays the um, the timestamps that we have captured. So let's say like going here to display 006, like on our captured 006 and something like that. So all the timestamps, whenever we click capture, and this is gonna this is not going to stop actually. It's gonna just keep counting up and up, and whenever we click, it's just gonna register something and just keep doing the job or keep counting up. No problem with that. So reset. Let me just go back and let's try to handle this up. So hinder here is the uh, the capture time as you can see into this button. So let's just go ahead and add the on click in here. We need to also add the function or the handler for the click events. So this I'm gonna call it handle handle um, timer capture. I'm gonna bind. Okay, you can't type. Okay, uh, handle time, handle timer counter actually, and here we're just gonna uh, put the call back into the class context, and we are ready to go. Now, what we want is the array. So if you can remember, going back into the captures array, this is the array under our state. What we want is whenever we click that button, we take the current time, which is displayed over here, we take that and just push it over into this array. We push it into the captures array, and then it takes this array and render it into the DOM, like this this simple thing all we do take it push it into here then render update everything and re-render actually the captures into the dom immediately into the left side over here and it's gonna get rendered successfully now let's just go ahead and use the push into the handle timer counter so here we need to push this so we can say this dot set state as you know we set the state but in this particular thing what we want is not a normal set state. So if you can remember that we can use a previous state using um, a React set state callback. So like uh, we're not gonna pass here an object. Instead of that, gonna pass in a callback. So this callback gonna takes another uh, the first argument as the previous state. So previous state and just gonna give us the other callback. And make sure to use wrap this into parentheses in order to push in or put here uh, like this is not a function scope or a callback scope this is a, an object scope which is the state object scope so those parentheses are going to be uh, for the instance the function scope or this callback scope if you can understand that here we need to push in the call the capture so we're gonna say captures equals an array obviously because an array and we're gonna take the current timing so the current um, the current minutes current seconds and current hours of course so let me just go up when we try or down pretty much not up um where is it here we, when we try to render things as you can see we put hours minutes and seconds and takes that and pretty much let's go ahead and do the um the same thing whenever we try to push in here and we try to put it so <laughs> this is not the way i want it to be but okay let's see um, I don't know how in here. Let's just try to type it hours. Uh, okay, we're gonna say this dot state the hours plus. I'm just gonna plus in two points and also we're gonna say this dot state dot minutes. And I'm gonna just say um, plus this dot state dot seconds. So this is pretty much what we need. But if you can quietly think about this for a second, what what I'm, what I'm actually saying is the captures each time it's just gonna this is array. So each time it's gonna equals a new array. So whenever we put in or press in the button of capture timer timestamp or something like that, or capture the current timer, what it tells it, it just gonna puts in the captures a new a brand new array. It's not going to push. The current hours, minutes, and seconds, which is the timestamps, into the captures, which has the previous uh, captured or there's none or something like that. But it just gonna push that into the array, not create a brand new array for that. Therefore, actually, we are using the previous state, so we can grab the previous captures using the previous state, and just gonna say the new captures equals the previous captures plus concatenating the new timestamp, which is the uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. So how we do that, ESX provides us with a really, really cool syntax. It's gonna help us a lot doing that. We can do this in a more complicated way, like in an old ways, JavaScript way, but ESX syntax thing, 
gonna help you a lot with this. So all you do, you can say previous states. So here, make sure to use the uh, totally all the brackets for the meaning of an array, and you say previous state dot captures, and obviously here we are accessing the previous states as you know. We say captures. And for that, to tell it's like this is an array for the instance, and this is an array, so we can't put an array inside an array, so this is no meaning. ESX, what it tells us to do in order to concatenate this array and add or push this new value into this particular array, then make it the captures, the current state captures, if you can understand pretty much that. What it tells us, it use three dots at the beginning, and we're just gonna split that with a like, um, I don't know, comma or something as, as a normal thing. So this is going to take the array, the previous state array, just going to take the values, all of the values, put them over here, and just add or push the new value with it and put it into the captures thing. So put it into the new captures array. So the new state captures array, what it's going to equal is the previous captures plus or pushing to it into like the new time step. So this is what it's telling in here using three dots. Make sure to use that in order to tell it to take the previous pushes or previous array, takes all the values from it and concatenates all the values, also the new value, all of them and just concatenate them into a brand new array and push it or say the capture is going to equal this new array. So this is how pretty much going to tell it to do. So that's how we can grab the previous state captures within and push in a new timestamp to it. So, this is the way that we cannot lose the our previous states or previous captures. Now actually we need to render the things. Now as you can see here we are pushing the captures into the actual captures array every time we click on the captures button and stuff. But after that we need to render it actually to the DOM over here. Um, sorry, uh, over here. So we need to show it into the left side in here in a really nice way that we have a capture. Let's say like capture one equals this particular timestamp, capture two equals this timestamp, and so on and so forth. This is how we can show it in here in particular. Now let's go back under the um the render process. So the render process is down here, and I've created the container under here. As you can see, there's like called um, they have class name with the class name use timer dash capture so if you can go to the main style I have a timer captures in here which is like the flex box design and just a column and a flex to start for justifying the content into the left side and yeah this is all I'm doing so this is gonna be like the main container for our uh, captures I'm just gonna put it in here and start rendering so actually what you need since you have an array in here so captures is an array what you usually do is go ahead and loop through each item and render that each item so if you are familiar with PHP or normal vanilla JavaScript this is how things are actually being done but in this particular case for react it in log GSX it doesn't have like a full loop in here or a while loop or something like this so what can you use for this particular case is a map method a map function so this map is already like a predefined under an array so it's like a base method from JavaScript so all you do you make sure to use the curly braces that you're going to tell it like we're gonna execute a GSX um, a logic operation and here you give it the array so can we say this dot captures so this state the captures and we use the map method as I've said so the map method what it takes as you can see a callback function so this callback function we're gonna use the ESX row function so just open up that and this is the basic thing so the in here the magic happens so under the callback the arguments the, the map method gonna pass into arguments by default so the first one is going to be the item into the capture so it's gonna loop each uh, or through each item on this uh, array and it's just gonna bring us each item so each time there would be an item uh, stored in this array so the first one is going to be item since we're gonna have time stamp so we're just gonna call it time and the second argument you might need it or you might not it's an optional thing is the index so like when you're running a for loop or something you have the i index like start from zero and keep looping till like an, on a specific time or like specific interval and stuff like that so this is the index each time uh, just start from zero and keep growing up and up to the, the length of the array so this is how pretty much the map works and here how you tell it to render stuff using the return so each time you're gonna return a brand new element and we're gonna use in this particular case you can use a dev in here to tell that we're gonna like use and also make sure to I don't know JavaScript and uh, react I don't like pretty much good for this moment Sometimes it's just gonna get into JavaScript by default, but make, always to make sure to use JavaScript React, not normal JavaScript 
to avoid problems. So here, we, as I've said, I'm gonna use a code. So what's this code think is like a predefined thing. So the code is just gonna give us some styling, especially since we are using bootstrap in here. So the code, um, the code layout in here is gonna give us a really, really nice thing like, I don't know, magenta stuff or a magenta color, a little nice with a cool font so we can use it to render this time stuff. As I've said, this is like a free of charge. You can use a div in here, you can use a P. I'm just gonna use it to style that a bit. So code. And then we're gonna just put the color braces and all the rendering things. And we're just gonna give it time. So first, let's say that this is gonna be a capture. So capture, and I'm gonna give it the index. So since the index, we're gonna use index. So the index plus one, since the index starts from zero, so we need to normalize it and make it start from one. And I'm just gonna concatenate things with each other. And here I'm just gonna give it some space in, or some, some I don't know, some style or something like this. So just uh, two dashes, and I'm just gonna give it the index. So we say capture, I don't know, some one, or capture two, or capture three, and the timer, or the time here, it's not a timer. And the time that's the capture uh, is holding. So yeah, this is how all pretty much we need. Just using a map method, we return each time in brand new element, depending on how much captures they are, and yeah, here we go. So here, and like if you are wondering how this is like gonna be like um, updating each time whenever we click the button. So whenever we click the handle time or capture button. So each time we click that, the state is gonna set a new state, new captures state and push a new uh, time step into the captures array that React gonna re-render our components, which means all of that is going to be re-rendered. So that means it's going to be updated and the map gonna add a print or the capture is gonna add the new uh, new element to it and just gonna return a new code. So uh, uh, as simple as that, this is how pretty much is going to work for us. So here, control S, saving everything and make sure just uh, everything is looking pretty much fine. Let's just go back to the browser, refresh, and here let's try to start a timer. I don't know, let's say um, on five, on five seconds, just gonna click the capture time. We click that, and awesome. Here we go. We get capture, the number of capture, which is one, and get 005. Now let's say 13 and 13 over here as I can see and so on and so forth you can capture how much ever and here's like some kind of a styling problem in here as you can see whenever you click that this gets overflowed you can you can fix that using some styles you can take this as a challenge or something like that to make this timer looks a little bit better if you do make sure make sure to let me know in the comments I'll be very happy to check your stylings and and anything you have any features you can add to this timer that would be really good for you and as an other learning experience as well so actually those actually guys you can we reset you can stop a timer start a timer stop it and so on and so forth so yep that was actually guys for this tutorial i really do hope you enjoy i enjoyed on this series on react and making stuff if you have anything else make sure to let me know in the comments i'll be very happy to do more video tutorials more practical examples like that and that would be really cool on this particular uh, like react series so thank you guys for watching again i will catch you in the next video tutorial